Your third album is going to be released in February, so I assume that uh, many of your friends or your colleagues already heard the album. Do you have any feedback so far? Uh, no, not really, actually. It's, it's kind of funny. I haven't showed it to many people. It's just no? the people who worked on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, what I noticed is that, well, uh, the Doubles find your debut album, which uh, well, well, makes you known for most of us. Uh, mm -hmm. It was um, mostly all you and doing it in a, in a raw kind of way. And yeah. Stranger Fruit was more a, it's a better production. Here is even better, or that's what I, what I get from listening to the album. But I think that Stranger Fruit was maybe more easy listening than this uh, self-titled album, at least in my opinion. What do you think about it? Uh, I think so too. Um, well, this time we had more time to think about what we wanted it to sound like. And uh, um, I wanted it to be still in the same yeah, universe as uh, the other records, but a little more aggressive. And I think uh, we've certainly achieved that and it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So um, you have more, you already said that you have more time this time to, to do the album, actually. It was because of everything what was going on in the world with the pandemic and everything that everything stopped or you were already planning before this when you released Stranger Food, you were already thinking okay i need to spend more time on the next one um well it was just basically we had the luck that you know during the 2020 we we thought we would write anyway so the stranger fruit was actually written just uh, for our live concerts Right. So those those are the songs that were written back in 2017, and since that, you know, three years have passed, and we had a lot of time to think, um, to think uh, what we wanted it to sound like. So th that was basically the situation. Right. You know, uh, the, these projects, you know, Laura, because you have other projects, uh, is known for you writing almost everything except the drums. It was the same uh, on the last album and again on this. Is because you don't want to learn to play the drums, or you don't want to play. You know how to play the drums, or you don't don't like to play the drums on this, or <laughs> what, what what is happening here? Well, I, I write the drums, but I just can't play them. So I, <laughs> I can make them on a the computer, no problem. But it's yeah. It's a. Uh, it's not an easy instrument, man. It's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. So we have, I think, it's fourteen songs on, on this album. The last one that we heard, I think, was called "On Liar," which is kind of the, the slow song here. Mm -hmm. um, is there any connection between all the songs besides the tempos and everything? Do you have faster songs, slower songs? Is there any connection between these fourteen songs, or it's just a collection of things that? across your mind in that time? Um, it is a collection, but I think uh, I, I made sure to have them, you know, even though they're very different in sound, I, I think the atmosphere is always kind of the, the similar. It's still in the same uh, headspace, the same mood. Right. Um, and there is a, yeah, it, it's still in the narrative of, you know, the what if uh, African slaves would enjoy Satan more than God? And that's... Hmm. That's the umbrella under that it is, yeah. Exactly. That that's the thing that the thematic thing about the, the American slaves was already shocking when Silverado first appeared, and everything that happens the years after with all these things with Black Lives Matter. Well, you were very involved with this, with your music and on your statements. So, do you think it's more necessary now to to make it visible for people, especially in America? Um, I think, you know, with a, we had an EP last year called Wake of a Nation, and that yeah. was very, very direct and very visible. Um, and actually, I prefer not to be so direct, but we, it felt like necessary to, to, to say something at the time. But uh, I would very much enjoy it if I could return to more, uh, more cryptic <laughs> songs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Great. So on this album, you are collaborating with Will Putney. He is a mixing master in this album, I think. Uh, how much of his input uh, is finally here? Or did he have anything to say about uh, how was the final result on this self-titled album? Well, the, he did. Yeah. Well, on the mix, I guess, he had a lot of influence. But yeah. 
uh, he was he was only he was uh, involved only in the last two steps. So he wasn't um, we didn't collaborate with him on, on writing or recording. Mm -hmm. But you can, I think you can still very much hear his fingerprint on it. He has a very um, direct way of mixing guitars and drums. Right. That they're aggressive but still warm and alive, and they love that. Right. And between the composing process and the recording process, these songs remain the same, or something has changed between the composing and the recording? Maybe some opinions from friends telling you maybe you should try something different, or the songs remain as they were written? Songs always stay as they were written. I'm a yeah. control freak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> right, so um, you just have a tour with, um, I think it was Mastodon on, on Opeth there in the States. Uh, yeah. How, how was it? Uh, because of all these things, it, it seems that everything was going to normal again after COVID, but we have a, a new variant now and things are going out of mind. So how was this tour? Uh, we were extremely lucky because the Omicron variant was not in the U U.S. yet, and uh, it it was fantastic, man. It was like like nothing ever happened. And Opeth and Mastodon, you know, they're huge bands, and you know they won Grammys and whatever. But mm -hmm. they're still the nicest guys on earth, and that just kind of warmed my heart because I know you can you can be huge, but you can still be a, a great guy. I love that. Cool. It was good. <laughs> Cool. I was checking your your interviews from uh, from actually from the first album, and you were already mentioning Meshuga back then. And mm -hmm. cool thing is, you have a tour with Meshuga uh, next year here in Europe. Fingers crossed. This happens. Uh, we hope so. Uh, and it's funny because you two guys make very experimental music, but it's very different from each other as well, right? So, yeah. uh, besides being a fan of Meshuga from, from a long time, do you think it would be weird to see you guys each night playing you and then them, them? I mean, it's always weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, we've met the guys on tour before, like uh, at festivals and stuff, and they're, they're awesome. But uh, it is still surreal, you know, to, to talk about a band like that you love, and then years later you're... We're going on tour with them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. So what's your plans about uh, the tour here in Europe? I don't know if you're a band that you would like to play a lot of songs from this subtitle album or just a couple of them and then play songs from the other albums. What's your idea about the, the next tour? Uh, we're still figuring that out. So I think it will become obvious once we start rehearsing. We will uh, see what We have a time, you know, we have a certain time length of the set and we'll see what, what makes for, for the, the best or the, uh, the most interesting set. Time will tell. Great. Okay. So um, as big as Silonaro is right now, at least in the metal scene, this is your third album. Uh, you always hear things like, uh, well, the third album you will see it if, if this band's really is going to go far or, or something like that. What do you think this album will represent for you as an artist? Do you think that it will be just another album or do you think that it will be a groundbreaking? Because I, I heard uh, you say that this is finally as you like to sound with Silonar on this album. Not the Stranger mm -hmm. Fruit, not Devil is Fine, here on this album. Do you think this will, be, this will be groundbreaking for you guys? I don't know about groundbreaking, but the thing is, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So if, if it flops and people think it's shit, I still like it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the thing is, like before, before Devil is Fine, I released another record on, on the internet. So actually, it's already our fourth record. Oh, I, right. I tricked the system. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. 